Welcome to Idle Lecture Online. Our next example deals with a circular ring that we're going to rotate about the x-axis which then forms a toroid or a donut shaped object and we're trying to find the surface area of that donut shaped object. We're going to rotate it about the x-axis so it looks like this. We have a donut here and then we come back in the other direction. So it kind of looks like a donut. We need to find the surface area the theorem of pappus galdina says that A is equal to the length of the curve, in this case it's going to be a complete circle, times the distance that the centroid covers as you're rotating about the axis of rotation. This would be the centroid, the very center of that circle, and we're rotating it about the x-axis so the path will look like this. Looks like a circular path, so therefore the length of the path would be 2 pi times the radius. The radius will be the y-coordinate of the centroid. Again, it will be the length of the curve times the path of the centroid, which is 2 pi times the radius that the centroid path takes, which is the y-coordinate of the centroid. R1 is considered the radius of that little circle there that we're rotating about the x-axis. A therefore equals 2 pi times R1, that would be the length of the curve, times 2 pi times the y-coordinate. In this case, the y-coordinate is equal to 5 centimeters. The radius of the circle is 2 centimeters, so y is 5 centimeters. The area then equals 2 pi times 2 pi, 4 pi squared times r1 times 5. Since r1 is 2 centimeters, let's plug that in. a equals 4 pi squared times 2 times 5. That's 10 times 4, that's 40. a equals 40 pi squared. And if you'd like to know what that is equal to, let's take the calculator. Pi squared times 40 equals 395 square centimeters. Area equals 395 centimeters squared. This is, of course, centimeters squared, centimeters squared. And that's the full answer. That's how we do that. An, a very easy way to find the surface area of a centroid. How else would you do it? This is the easy way to do it. Again, very clever, very quick, very simplistic. That's how we uh, use the theorem of Pappus-Gulbinus.